thank you for those of you who were brave enough to come back after the long break. I know you've had a long day already. And in addition, I'm going to be speaking in English. So I hope you have a simultaneous translation if you need it. I love building brands. But the important thing that you all should know now, after sitting through this session today, is a brand is not simply a sticker, it's not simply a logo, right? Many brand managers still think that a brand is taking a sticker and taking it to a sporting event and putting your brand there. Many people think that it's a nice balloon with your name on it, but there's so much more. A brand is a promise. It's a promise that you as a corporation or you as an individual make. It's the values that you want to exude to your target audience. But most importantly, it's not just an idea. It's not just something that looks pretty. You have to make sure that you deliver the brand, okay? As brand people, many times people think that we play a small role. Actually, brands should be from the very top. You need to take charge of your corporation's brand and ensure that it's aligned throughout the cross-functional organization. I'll get into that in further detail. But today, uh, I want to keep it quite light without being too theoretical, okay? I've learned about five or six points, key takeaways in my 20, 25 years working in corporations. But I'm going to try to squeeze it all for you within 30 minutes, all right? When I deal with personal coaching, I see that individuals have a big concern when they face a threat. Every human being asks themselves when they see a threat whether I'm going to go and confront the threat or am I going to flee and run away from the threat. Okay? From a brand perspective, running away from the threat is like running away from change running away from transformation, not willing to evolve your brand. Because we're in our comfort zone. Why should we change? No one has told us to. So do we need to do it? For me, personally, I faced the fight or flight moment in my career after I was chief of corporate affairs at DTAC. My mother fell ill. So I was faced with a decision. Do I continue with corporate life and not have much time to help my mother, nurture her, or do I take some time off and then reevaluate what I want to do? So I chose to fight. It's not flight, it's fight. I'm willing to take on something new, okay? So in evaluating it, I decided, okay, what are my skill sets? What are my competencies? What do I like to do in my life? And take the learnings that I have from the 20, 25 years doing branding for corporations, and then let's see if we could put it towards something else, something new that can help individuals maximize their leadership potential. And you quickly realize that building a corporate brand and building an individual brand is almost identical. Okay, so I hope that the talk that I give you today will perhaps help you with your corporate brand. It'll help you with your people management, but I hope it'll help you as individuals build your own brand. So the first key takeaway, the first thing, whether you're an individual brand or a corporate brand is, what do you stand for? What do you want to be? And for this, I'm going to give a bit of a case study for TMB, TMB Bank, Thai Military Bank, Bank Tanakan Tahan Thai, okay? I think that this is the most amazing story of a turnaround or a transformation in Thai history. This bank, at one point, had over 15, 16% NPL. I think that that's a world record. I don't think any other bank has hit 16% NPL of their portfolio. 
At 2008, when I came in with a new management team, we had accumulated losses of 103 billion. This represented 1% of Thailand GDP. Now, this is important because in 2008, if all of you remember, there was a global economic crisis. And Lehman Brothers, the US government would not let Lehman Brothers fail because Lehman Brothers held one-tenth of the US GDP. Now, can you imagine if TMB failed? We're at 1% of GDP for Thailand, 1%. Lehman Brothers is 0.1. If TMB failed, it would be a systemic risk throughout the country. It would probably kill the banking sector altogether. So we're not only helping to transform TMB, we're trying to save the banking system in Thailand. Oops, I'm sorry. Okay, so in 2008, when I came in, it was already a 53-year-old bank, Thai military bank. Brand consideration, I, I know that some of the other speakers talked about brand consideration, brand awareness, et cetera. Brand consideration is how many people would even think about TMB? One third, so one out of every three people would even think of TMB. But the number I want you to remember is this 29%. When you ask 20, uh, 100 people, 29 will say that we hate TMB. There's no way we, we would even try TMB. Horrible bank, right? And if TMB were an actor, we did some research, and we asked people, because um, it's always easier to look at brands as a human. If TMB were an actor, who would that actor be? Do you have any guess? Say it. OK. You know this guy? Sombat <laughs> Metini. This was my first year at TMB, okay? What a mess. In addition to this, every day we had problems with the union. We had to let go of about 2,000 of the workforce. I had a staff that were not used to working. They were not used to change. Every time I asked them to do something, it was, We've always done it like this. Why are we going to try something new? So do you ever have that feeling that um, you go to work and you just feel like you're going through the motions, you don't have the energy? I was in the shower and I was thinking, I hate going to work today. I hate this thing. But then a light bulb went off when I was in the shower. I thought, am I going to be a victim and allow allow them to win, allow the status quo to win, or am I going to feel power, feel empowered to make a change to myself, and then I will go make a change to the staff. And then I thought, what would motivate me when I go to the bank? And I thought, I need to go and make the difference. So it was a personal journey I was going through. I, as an individual, needed to make the difference for my team, for my work. And then I wrote it down and gave it to the CEO and said, I think this will work for TMB as well. Because a brand cannot change just from the top. It can't just change because a branding team says so. You, as branding people, as leaders, need to inspire everyone around you that they have the power to change. They're not victims. They don't need to just sit there and wait for an order. So the goal of Make the Difference was look around your area, no matter where you are, risk management, collections, operations, call center. What can you do better today than you did before? That's Make the Difference. Now, we couldn't just make any difference, okay? We couldn't just wear clown suits to come to work. We need to make a positive difference that will contribute to a positive environment at TMB. 
So who did we want to be from Sombat Metini? We wanted to look like Senya Pidu, right? So he looks smart. He looks like the target audience we want. But the, the journey doesn't stop there. I take it as Pidu being a logo. He's like a sticker for us. But we need to populate him with what is important. What's the values that we want Pidu to exude to the target audience? Now, as individuals, you need to determine if you're going to build your own brand, what do you stand for? What are your principles? What are the things that matter to you? So the things that mattered to me were, OK, now I want to uh, challenge the status quo. I don't want to stay in a comfort zone. I want to shift the paradigm. And I'd want to be brutally honest doing it, but respectful, OK? So ask yourselves as you're sitting there, what do I stand for? What does my company stand for? And is everyone living that? So like a person, I want to inspire. Brands need to inspire. And I believe that once you as an individual feel that power, once you feel that sense of empowerment, then you will be contagious. Not like COVID contagious, but in a positive way. So those around you will see that, wow, this guy is very positive. He can get things done. He's not complaining. So negative attracts the negative. But at the same time, you're going to attract like-minded people if you stay positive. And then it'll be a ripple out effect into the community. Okay, so you're starting to build a virtuous cycle from the inspiration within you. So when you go to events like this, where you meet a lot of strangers, a lot of people just start to feel small. They feel the pressure that, do I belong here? I'm a bit shy. And you feel like this small planet that's gravitating around the sun. So everyone's always looking for, who should I go talk to? Who is safe, right? From this day forward, when you enter a room, I want you to think that you're the big bubble or you're the sun. Be the sun, and then people will be attracted towards you, okay? And to be the sun or to be the big bubble and get people to attract towards you, you need to have the inspiration to pull them, not the negativity. So do these brands inspire you? Who uses Apple in this room? Show of hands. Who uses Apple? Half. During COVID, or even now, who watches Netflix? Show of hands. Everyone. So the conversation now, whenever you go to a party or a dinner, is what are you watching on Netflix, right? Everyone talks about what's on Netflix. Now, Trump and Pence, is that a brand? It's a brand. He had 76 million people vote for him. Whether we like him as a brand, maybe not. But 50% of Americans love him. They'll do anything for him. They'll trust anything that he says. What a strong brand Trump is. Divisive, but very strong. So you have to wonder why. He speaks to his audience. He has to understand the audience. He understands everything and tries to align it towards the people that he's trying to serve, okay? So in the corporate, in the corporation, when I tell you that branding is not a brand manager's job only, your job is to look at the end-to-end -end customer journey, starting from how did they even hear about you, what to do to build that part of the awareness, and how can you maintain the entire customer journey, understanding what their needs are and what their pains are. Now, this is something that research will not get you. You can go out and try and say, what do you want as a customer? We did that at Orange. We did that at TMB Bank. The answer always is, I want a lower phone, lower cost for a phone, or I want a lower cost for a package. It's always about money. They don't know what they want. 
If you want to ask customers what they want, you'll never get SMS. You'll never get WhatsApp, okay? So you have to understand what the pain points are, what the customer needs are. They're not going to tell you, okay? And again, like an individual brand, when you go out and meet people, when you're going out to meet colleagues, your boss, what makes your boss tick? How does he think? How will you relate? Okay? This doesn't mean you have to change your principles, what you want to be, but you have to understand the game. How are you going to penetrate your message to each person since each person is different? So I have a case study. Uh, when we launched Orange in 1999, if you go back that far, you'll remember our competitors were AIS, Advanced Info Service. You'll remember TAC, uh, Total Access Communications or DTAC. Every commercial that you saw had a phone, a mobile phone in it, where you saw you know, uh, wires or things like this. It was very technical um, in nature. So what we wanted to do was show that we have a human touch. We use mobile phones to enable you to get closer get closer to your family, get closer to your friends. So we thought we had a great idea here to show that through Orange, you'll be able to get closer to your parents, to your friends, to your family. Okay, so let's watch it. Who likes the ad? Who likes it? Interesting. One person. You know, this ad won, Kunparut knows from <laughs> Leo Burnett. This, won, this ad won so many awards around the world. We thought it was a beautiful commercial to launch with. It's our launch commercial we thought was going to inspire people. It failed miserably. Absolutely failed. Because we didn't understand the target audience. They don't understand this. Where's the mobile phone? What are you selling? You know? So you cannot just snap your fingers and say, I'm going to establish a brand. Brands take time. Trust needs to be earned. And I'm sure all of your companies have these brand DNAs, these brand values. But I urge you, make them challenging. Challenge your workforce on what the values should be. Because these are the things that will reinforce your brand principle. So you look at TMB, it's make the difference. All of these things need to be done for the customer to feel that we make the difference for them. We need to have a why not attitude. Okay? Not just a positive attitude. We need to go around the company and say, why are things like this? Can things be better? Why not? So this is challenging the status quo, if you remember. We want people to be intelligent. It's, in English, there's a difference between knowledgeable and intelligent. Knowledgeable is book smart. 
you're smart from school, okay? Intelligence is learning how to apply those smarts into the real world, okay? Simple and easy. One thing I found helping brands is it is very difficult to make things simple. And the thing about common sense is it's not so common, all right? So you remember this. I asked you to think, what do you stand for? All right, it's one thing to have an aspiration of what you want your brand to be. But the key thing is, are you reaching your audience? Do they feel what you stand for? How do they perceive you? When I do my performance coaching with individuals, many people say, yes, I want my brand to be like the Oriental Hotel. I think I am a great listener. Then you do a brand 360. You do a 360 about that individual from their bosses, their team, their colleagues, and some people cry because they don't know what the reality is. They think that, yes, I have a very good perception. I think everyone likes me, but maybe they don't. So you have to, understanding the audience is you have to watch the body language. I'm watching now, everyone wants to fall asleep, I think. But you have to watch the body language. Are they sitting like this, you know? What's the reaction, what's the feedback, and adjust yourself in order to ensure that they perceive you the way you want to be perceived. Brands need to be vigilant. So let's go back to TMB and when I came. It was a Thai military bank, and the look and feel is very confusing. What do you think? Very confusing, sort of ugly. <laughs> but consistency requires vigilance. So this is all of the things that customer touch points, point of sale, the way we want our staff to act, the way we want our staff to look. This is, has to follow a brand framework, and it has to be consistent. So there were many branch managers that I had to yell at and say, yeah, maybe wearing long tao ta, timi katai, mei mo, tisa ka, right? It just doesn't look right to wear bunny slippers at the branch. Will they trust you with your money? Or will they think it's just, you know, too casual? Now, as an individual, everyone knows Elon Musk. Very smart guy, innovative thinker, dreamer, like Tony Stark in Iron Man. But he gave an interview September 2018 with Joe Rogan while he was smoking marijuana. So think about when you go out, you meet bankers, you meet high-level professionals, top management, when you go to the bars. Do you ever see them drunk? Do you ever see them let loose? Do you see them act not so nice? This doesn't just reflect poorly on them as individuals, but it reflects on the brands that they work for. So there are plenty of times I went out with other bankers and they party hard and they go crazy. But then you look at them and you think, oh, do I trust this bank? This guy works for this bank. Do I trust it? Now what happens? The day after Elon Musk was smoking pot, Tesla's share prices dropped 9%. US Air Force, which had deals with SpaceX, investigated SpaceX to see are there any potential risks because of this guy's behavior. Many people tell me that, oh, it's their own personal time. What they do outside the office is up to them. But this shows that how people act, especially leaders, makes a difference. And then one thing that you see is brands need to constantly evolve. So I told you, don't stay still, don't stay in a comfort zone. Look at these brands. At the very beginning, you had to tell what the name was. Nowadays, when you get to 2019, 2020, there's no name at all, but they're just names, logos you recognize. These are brands that you see all the time and they've gained your trust. And likewise, you as an individual have to do the same thing because if you don't adapt, who remembers all these brands? They've pretty much died. 
And if you don't change, and if you don't adapt, you will become insignificant. Okay, so I have three minutes left. Um, I think it's just enough time for this video. Okay. 
แล้วเรื่องของคุณละ่ะที่เอ็มบีเชื่อว่าพลังในตัวคุณเปลี่ยนโลกให้ดีขึ้น TMB make the difference Did you like that one? So this just shows the arch of the learning. The first one was orange. No one liked it. Didn't understand the target audience. This one we did a lot of research and tried to find something that would reinforce, make the difference. These kids had an idea of what they wanted to be. They weren't going to be victims. They're going to find a way to make it happen. This is what make the difference is. It's ha it happened to be my personal brand philosophy, and it worked for TMB as well. And it was a great success. So as you'll see, three years later. If you remember that other number, 53-33-29, brand consideration went from 33% to 79% in three years, and brand rejection dropped to 2%. So that's quite a feat. So in conclusion, corporate brand, individual brand, is very similar. The most important thing are the people. Okay, so make sure that people in your company. Are inspired by your brand. Make sure you're inspired by your brand. Make sure that you're inspirational on your own. Anyone can change. There's no excuse. Think of yourselves as supermen. Go up to the next level. Everyone can. You can try, and then try to make the difference for yourself in your lives. Thank you very much. Come.